Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. God is faithful to provide. And one of the things that we are called to do as his people is recognize his provision and to be good stewards of what he has given to us. Why? This is how we testify of his work in our life, making this known to others, being good stewards of his provision. And in doing so, it will bring in our life greater provision. For what purpose? To grow spiritually, to accomplish more that he has for us. We need to realize God wants to use you and me. And to the degree that we are good stewards of his provision, that he will provide more so that we can accomplish his will for our life. And worship is foundational. If we're not worshiping God, we can't serve God. If we're not worshiping God properly, we're not going to be recipients of that provision, which includes revelation, insight, guidance. God, he moves in the midst of his people when they worship him. Well, with that said, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Exodus, Sefer Shemot, and, and chapter 35, the book of Exodus, and chapter 35. Now, we have seen that God has a program for worship. He has given very clear instructions of how to make this tabernacle that the people would worship him in, in the wilderness. It would be set up, as we know, at a place called Shiloh, north of Jerusalem, for, for many years. And it was foundational in the people coming together, worshiping God, and don't miss this, and hearing his insight, his truth, his inspiration for his people. Worship leads us to being recipients of this guidance in our life having a greater understanding and appreciation for God. Worship has many, many blessings that come into us when we worship God properly. And we're going to see over and over, we've seen it already, that God gives these instructions. He repeats them. But each repetition, there is greater information. There's some principle some message that we can take in an additional sense to apply to our life so that we can grow in our ability to worship God. And if we're not doing that daily, growing in our ability to worship God, understand God, draw closer to God, then we have a spiritual problem. Well, let's begin. Look with me, as I said, to Exodus chapter 35, and we're going to begin in verse 20, we read here, and all the congregation of the children of Israel. Now remember, that word congregation, as I emphasized over and over last week, that word congregation is a word that relates to testifying, bearing witness. So it's the group of witnesses of the children of Israel. They went forth from before Moses. Now, we'll remember what, what we learned last week, that Moses assembled the people. He gave them instructions what to do, how to do the things that were necessary for worship. And what's happening now? The people are responding. 
So let me ask you a question. And this is just foundational. It really gives uh, an indication of where you are spiritually. And that is this. When, when you encounter God's instructions, you know what God wants you to do. Are you someone that goes out and begins to do it? That's where we see the children of Israel responding to God's instruction through Moses. We read here, and all the witness of the children of Israel, all those who wanted to bear testimony, they went forth from before Moses. They left Moses, departed from before him. And what did they do? Verse 21. And every man went. Now it says every man, normally that's in the singular, but the verb here for going forth, departing, is in the plural. And it's to emphasize not just one man did this, but every individual. This is how the congregation, this group of witnesses, those who want to bear testimony to others concerning their faith in the Lord, this is how they behave. So every man went who his heart lifted up. Now, what this is going to tell us in this passage is that there's a few different idioms that are used in Hebrew. This is word for being lifted up. And it simply underscores the fact that God sets us on an upward call. Here, his heart lifted him. When he thought properly, and remember the connection between the word heart, lave, and the word for thinking. These two words go together. They, they work together. So these individuals, they were thinking right. And they had a different perspective. Being lifted up, you see things differently. So everyone's heart who lifted him up, they went forth, they responded. Everyone who his spirit was generous in him. And it goes back to this desire of being generous, wanting to volunteer, wanting to participate in the things of God. So this brings us to a second principle in the text, and that is this. Do I really want to participate in the things of God? Am I moved by the things that move God? We are, are reminded so frequently in the New Covenant, in the Gospels, where it says that Yeshua, he was moved with compassion. It was compassion that caused him to do the things that oftentimes he did. Well, here it's word for having a generous, a, a volunteering spirit, wanting to get involved in the things of God. So once more, we need to ask ourselves, when there is an opportunity to get involved in the things of God, do you desire that? Are you bent towards doing that, getting involved? These people who were going to be foundational in God's people worshiping him, they were of that nature, that type. So all who his spirit was generous within him, what did they do? Well, they brought the donation of the Lord for the work of the tent of the meeting. Now, I want to stop because we are going to find eight times, and I don't believe that's by accident. Eight signifies newness. It is a kingdom number, and it's also related to redemption. So these people who are changed, these people who are kingdom-minded, these people who are living based upon the redemption they have experienced, what are they doing? They are bringing forth. They are offering. And this is so important. Eight times we're going to be told in the remaining verses of this section of Exodus 35 that, that they brought they donated, they gave, 
they get involved they did they get in what the lord was instructing them to do they were involved so they brought so the first time look carefully middle of verse 21 they brought the donation of the lord for the work of the tent of meeting for all of its service everything that was done there all of its service and for the holy garments so they wanted a priesthood that functioned and they wanted a place whereby they could bear witness of their faith their covenantal relationship with god so important foundational servants of god and a place to worship him and it's interesting because if we go back to what we studied last week in the first part of chapter 35 we see that moses assembled the people i mentioned that this is a verb but it can also be a noun and we're talking about a different word for congregation kihila so here we see how important the local assembly is as bearing witness, giving testimony of one's faith. Verse 22. And the men came with the women. We see unity here. Both men and women responded. Everyone, all people, everyone who had a, and here's the second time this word appears here, a different form, but same root. Nadiv lave, a generous heart. Now let's just pause for a moment and again ask ourselves a question. And that is, do I have a generous heart? When there's an opportunity to get involved, when there's a need, am I, I given over to get involved in that need? to provide something, to give something, to bring something, to, to bless someone else. Now, if you're honest, you may have to say, no, I'm not this way. Then begin to pray. Pray, God, make my heart generous. When there are opportunities, lead me to desire to participate. God is an expert of changing the heart. What does the scripture say about that? He circumcises the heart. He takes out that heart of stone and puts in it a heart of flesh. And here, flesh is not that carnal nature, but flesh is sensitive. You, you take a sharp uh, object and you, you prick your, your, your flesh, your hand, your body responds. So a heart of flesh is a responsive heart, a heart that can fill the hurts, the needs, the joys of others, and, and act in an appropriate response. That's what we should be doing. If we're not doing it, we need to be praying to have that type of heart. Such that do have that heart, notice what it did. Here's the second time. They brought, and notice what they brought. They brought their nose rings, their earrings, their rings, their necklaces, all of this had value. All of this was for the glorification of self. They put that aside. They wanted to use that which in the past was for their glory. Now they wanted to use that for the glory of God. So significant. Don't just read over these verses thinking that they're insignificant, that they're just a narrative that we read and we move past. Absolutely not. They are so insightful. This scripture has great relevance for those who want to worship God, to be an individual that God is well pleased with. So these individuals, second time this word is used, they brought the nose ring, earring, the rings for the fingers, necklaces, every vessel, all their vessels of gold. Every man who, and notice what it says here, Hanif tnufat zahav le'adonai, which means this. Hanif is to wave it. And the next word is speaking of a wave offering. 
They wanted to demonstrate, not for a prideful reason, read what the commentators say, but for a encouragement to others that they were bringing that which was precious to them. But now God was more precious. So they took what was unto themselves and now they made it into, and what the scripture literally says, a wave offering of gold, and here it is, to the Lord. Now, this phrase, to the Lord, can equally be translated as of God. Some commentators rightly point out that what they were doing was saying, you know, God, you're the one who provided these things. They're really of you. And this wave offering is a testimony that what I possess really belongs to God. And we want to acknowledge that that's what's happening in this passage. Verse 23. And every man who was found with him, meaning every man that was found with him, what was found with him? This techelet, this turquoise, this blue material, and also the royal purple, the argaman, and the, the crimson or scarlet, and the, the fabrics, and also the goat hair. And also ram skins dyed red, and also these other skins that we talked about, or wrote techashim, which we really don't know the particular animal that's mentioned here. It says in the verse 23, the third time they brought. So all of these valuable materials, not just gold and silver, but other things that had value. They now gave unto the Lord. Why? Out of obedience. And here's the key. There's an inherent relationship between obedience and worship. And that's why I'm so concerned today that when we look at much of what's going on as worship, it does not relate to obedience to the word of God, but it's more of a a similarity to the ways of the world. And here's the danger. And I have prayed over this. I have considered it very carefully before saying this. But in the same way that that godly commanded worship brings the ministry of the Holy Spirit more powerful into our life, that anointing, when we worship God incorrectly, It is an invitation for demonic influence. And I think much of what is seen today in such movements as Bethel, under the leadership of a false teacher, Bill Johnson, and those that associate with him, these individuals are extremely problematic. What you're seeing there is not, not manifestations of the Holy Spirit. What you're seeing is demonic manifestations. And it it grieves me to see a, a fellow Jew like Sid Roth giving the large platform that he has to these false teachers. And it grieves me to see other individuals who have a show like the Jewish Voice, which I respect Jonathan Burness. But but let this be a warning that many of the people that he's inviting onto his show are false teachers. They are not giving truth. It is very, very dangerous. And it is an invitation for the enemy to go to work rather than the Holy Spirit. This is serious stuff. We need to have our worship founded on scriptural admonitions, not the ways of the world. And stop trying to simply entice people with something that is sensational. The message for Jonathan Kahn. So much of what he is sharing is false. It is not rooted in scripture. It's misappropriating the scripture and saying what God spoke prophesied concerning Israel 
and trying to liken that, link that to what happened in Manhattan. It is wrong. We, we need to realize that these individuals that spoke four or five years ago about the blood moons, four blood moons, and the significance of Shemitah, and the wrong understanding that they gave to it, and then the Jubilee, all of this, nothing, nothing happened in those years. And the years that they are silent in now, this is when we have a lot of things going on with the coronavirus. And now they're reinterpreting, they're doing other false teachings with manipulation of Scripture to justify themselves. Realize, such false teaching brings about disastrous outcomes. I realize this is not going to endear me to many, but so what? We are not called to be pleasers of men. In fact, we need to be individuals that first and foremost want to please God and speak love, but with firmness at times concerning the heir of the people of God. So get serious. That's what the people were doing here. This remnant that responded. Verse, verse 24. And everyone, and we have a different word. We had the word earlier on for Hanif to wave. And this is a lifting up, lifting up the trumat, lifting up the, the, the elevation offering, we might say, of or the donation of silver and copper. And here's the fourth time they brought. Now, why these three times so far with, with gold and then we see with silver and, and, and such? Because whatever they had, they could participate. Any of this material that was located with them, they were called to bring. So everyone that lifted up the donation of silver and copper, they brought it. The donation unto the Lord, all who was found with it. What was it here? Now we're dealing with another element, with acacia wood. For all the work of the service, and here it is again, they brought the fifth time. So over and over, we're going to see three more occurrences where they brought, they brought, they brought. That which was with them, located with them, they no longer held on to it, but they gave it. Why? So that others, including themselves, but others could worship God. They understood that what they were part of went beyond their own congregation. That they were on a call for the world to reach out with the truth of God, the worship of the one God, the God of Israel, to all the world. Verse 25. And every woman that had a wise heart in her hand that she possessed it for what? For for spinning yarn for for making yarn it says they brought these women they brought also what they what they spun that of techelet that that turquoise of royal blue of scarlet and also of of linen or this fabric every woman that her heart lifted up. And this is saying they responded because they could see things differently. Their heart gave them a new perspective. And we also see the same phrase going on that there was with, with, with that heart, they were able to be wise and they spun that of the, the goat hair and the leaders, verse 27, their leaders, they, here's the sixth time, they brought the stones of Shoham. Now, we don't know what Shoham stones are, but they were of great value. And also the stones for the, the setting, the inlaying of what? The inlaying of the, the ephod, the vest, and the choshen, the breastplate. 
So we see gold and silver and copper. Then we see techelet, this turquoise, this rich blue material, that royal purple argaman, and then tolat shani, this, this scarlet or crimson, and then sheish, which is this fabric. All of this the people brought, also acacia wood, and then finally these stones, verse 28. Also the perfume and the oil for illumination, this would have been for the menorah, and for the anointing oil, so oil for two purposes, the menorah for the illumination and also for the anointing, and also incense spices. Every man, every woman who, here's the key, third time it said this, who had a generous heart, it says, these are the ones that what? They, and this is the seventh time, they brought. They brought, and finally, for all the work which the Lord commanded to do under the authority of Moses, by the hand of Moses, they brought last time, eighth time. Now, if we go back and we see the woman as well being told to brought, it's actually nine times. But we read here, under the authority of Moses, they brought, who brought the children of Israel, and then the fourth time, they brought the, the generosity, it says, to the Lord. So over and over, we see these same words being used to teach us. A generous heart gives us a different perspective. It lifts us up. And then what do we see in the last part of what we're going to study in, in chapter 35? Well, God gave all of those things that people had. They recognize God's provision by offering it back to him. And in doing so, God provided individuals who could do the work. Now, we've already mentioned several weeks ago that this work was beyond human intellect to understand how to make it. For example, the menorah. To take a lump of gold, not melt gold into a form, into a cast, and that it comes out, that's not what the menorah was. That's why the menorah that the Temple Institute has isn't fit for the temple. That is a false assumption. Now, they tell Christians this, but it's not true. It is not appropriate for the temple because the temple menorah has to be one lump of gold which is beaten with a petish, a hammer, into form. We can't do that. Now, look with me to this final passage. And I'm speaking of verses 30 through 35. We're going to see here that it says, Verse 30, and Moses said to the children of Israel, see, and this word implies see the faithfulness of God. Now, remember what I said. Your faithfulness will lead to greater provision from God. As you are faithful in the little things, God will provide for you greater opportunities to demonstrate a greater faith. And so he says, see, the Lord has called by name Betzael, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, from the tribe of Judah. So among all of these men, he called one in a unique way to begin with, to oversee the work of making these vessels and the construction of the tabernacle. Verse 31. Now, whom the Lord calls, he also equips. And he filled him, this is God, he filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, and with knowledge. And in all the work. And what was this work? Verse 32. To think thoughts. Now, this is the design, to understand the design of the Lord, to make things with gold and with silver and with copper, and for the cutting of the stone, 
for the settings and also the cutting of wood to make with all the work of this design. So the scripture is telling us that he, Betzael, he was given this insight, this understanding, this perception in order to carry out the work, to be able to perceive, here's the key, the mind of God. Now, this relates to something for all believers because we are called to have the mind of Christ. I said uh, not too long ago, it'll be broadcast on television in a few weeks, but in teaching this message that I did from Matthew, I mentioned Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, where it says, do not be conformed to the image of this world, the ways of this world. But he says, be transformed by, and most Bibles, they translate it wrong. It will say by the renewing of your mind. The problem is the best texts don't have the word your for your mind, and it's not renewing as in a participle, but it is a noun and functioning in an adjectival way where it really, literally should be, be translated, be ye transformed by the renewed mind. And what renewed mind are we speaking about? The mind of Messiah. See, God does not renew my mind. He replaces my mind, my thoughts, with his mind, his thoughts. And that is what God wants to do. He wants to give us his mind so that we can carry out his will. Verse 34. Now, this individual, Betzel, he was going to be responsible, but he could also, look at verse 34, to teach, to instruct, and to put in his heart, he and, there's another one, a man by the name of Oholiav, the son of Achisamach, from the tribe of Dan. Now, I don't believe it's an accident that these two tribes are mentioned here. The tribe of Judah, and this word speaks of praising God, giving thanks to God, acknowledging God. And then the tri tribe Dan, which is a term of judgment. That is discernment. Giving the right verdict, the right understanding of a situation. And here's what the message of the scripture is. It is only, and I want to emphasize this, it is only when we worship God, give thanks to him, acknowledge God in all of our ways, then the outcome of that is that God is going to give us discernment so that we can make the right judgments, that we will not be, be victims of false teaching. Verse 5, our last verse, verse 35. He filled them with a wise heart. For what purpose? Just to be wise. To do all the work. The cutting, the designing, the embroidery with the turquoise, the purple, the, the scarlet, and the fabric. And the weaving and the ones who did all the work, the ones who were thinkers of the design, had the ability to think in the designs of God. What this scripture is saying is this. It was only after the people brought, remember that, eight times, maybe even nine times, this term is there. They brought. They took God's provision, what he had blessed them with, they responded back to him, and what did God do? He provided those individuals that he prepared, that he gave insight to in order to carry out the work so the people could worship God in a new way, in an appropriate way for that time and his purpose in order to be a testimony to all the world. Well, remember that we are called to be individuals 
that are servants of God. That should be our utmost concern. To God be the glory. Great things he has done and greater things he will do through his only begotten son and the people who receive his son, Messiah Yeshua, into their life. Well, I'll close with that until next week. Shalom from Israel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. Shalom from Israel.